you better get ready. 2022, the year of God's orchestrated divine breakthrough for your life. It says I'm staying alert and in cop, top condition. I'm not going to get caught napping. Telling everything, everybody else about it and then missing out myself. Hebrews 12 verse 1 and 3, Message Bible, he says, Do you see what this means? All these pioneers who blazed the way. Talk about those names in Hebrews 11. People who made a difference. All these veterans cheering us on. You. To get on with it. He says it means we better get on with it. No extra spiritual fat. No parasitic sins. Keep your eyes on Jesus who both began and finished. This race we're in. Study how he did it. Because he never lost sight of where he was headed. He never lost sight. He never allowed his emotions. God of Gethsemane, when the burden became so heavy, the Bible says he sweated great drops of blood. He said, Father, not my will be done, but thy will be done. He never lost his hunger. He never lost his appetite. He never lost sight of why he was placed on this earth. He ran, enduring hostility, enduring adversity. And the key that kept him, and, and, and remember he was born of the Virgin Mary, but Jesus had to discover from Scripture and through his mother that he was the Messiah. You do understand that? That he wasn't born with a halo over his head that pointed this is the Messiah, this is the Son of God. Jesus had to believe through Scripture and through what His mother said that He is both God and man and that He was anointed for that time. When He's 30 years old, He says, The Spirit of the Lord's upon me because He's anointed me. And His assignment in life begins. Until that, it's a discovery. He studies the Word. He reasons with the rabbis. He discovers... As a matter of fact, when he began to operate in his assignment, his mother doubted suddenly that he was the Messiah. You do know that because now Jesus was going beyond what she thought he should be going. And the Bible says as he was preaching one day, his mother and his brothers came and because they thought he was beside himself and they actually came to collect Jesus. Read it in your Bible. And Jesus said, those are not my mother and my brothers. Those who hear the word and do the word, they are my mothers and my brothers. You know, when he spoke to the disciples about going to the cross and Peter, because of emotion and affection, not so. He said, get behind me, Satan, for you do not save or you are not mindful of the things of God. So Jesus had no doubt of who he was and what his assignment was in life. And you will see the words that he says over and over. I must go to Jerusalem. I must preach the gospel to other cities also. I must deliver people. You see that Jesus knew who he was, and then he also knew what God called him to do. And in John 20, 21, he says, As my Father sent me, so send I you. So yeah, the other scripture is very clear. It says, if we are going to finish, we have to study how Jesus did it. Well, then you have to see the prayer life of Jesus. You have to study the anointing of Jesus. You have to understand the, discover the way that Jesus walked, the teachings that Jesus lived. And you have to imitate Jesus Christ, whether you are an, an advocate, a teacher, a student, a housewife, a mother, a doctor. It doesn't matter what you are, who you are. You have to keep your focus on the person of Jesus Christ or you're going to get lost. And you have to study and consider how Jesus ran the race because it, it says he began and he finished. A lot of good starters, few good finishers, right? We used to watch the comrades when it was still on TV. I, think, I don't know if it's there anymore. But how people started out. And the people that were in front in the first 10 kilometers, how many of them ended that race? Oh, no, they were glory boys. They were there to be seen for the moment. They were not there for the long haul. So they didn't pace themselves. They were there to have a moment. God's not called you to have a moment. God's called you to have a life of impact. And for you to live a life of impact, you have to discover who you are and you have to discover what the assignment of God is for your life. Please. And 
you alone can do that because being precedes doing. You have to know who you are before you will ever know what you can do. Not what your father says about you. I'm not talking about your heavenly father. Not what your mother says. Not what the grade five teachers said. Not what the sports coach said. What does God say about you? So when you discover God, you discover your destiny. That's why it's so tragic for me when I sit with a young person and I say, what's your life all about? And you can quickly find out what their lives are about by just seeing where they were the last few weeks. Because your activity tells you what you are pursuing. Amen. So when you press into God and you press into the things of God, it shows that you are running this race that the Bible talks about. This pressing in is not something we do, by the way. It's not something we do casual. It's something that every generation has to do. And remember, I was your age at one stage as well. Some of you are older, most of you are younger than me. I was a 70-year-old. I was 20, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I was there as well. I'm not talking French here. I'm not somebody that doesn't understand where you are. I don't not understand the thoughts that you have, the battles that you have as a 22-year-old young male full of testosterone. I know exactly how you think as a 16-year-old, an 18-year-old. I know exactly what's going on in your mind. And until you don't, you don't get serious about God, you are going to be riding the big tapper for the rest of your life. Then you're up, then you're down, then you're up, then you're down, then you're on fire, then you're lukewarm, then you're in church, then you're not in church, etc. When are you going to be like this athlete that the Bible talks about where you sit down and you get a goal in mind? And before I even talk about the goal in this world, I talk about the goal of eternity that should overshadow everything else in our lives. The day you stand before Jesus Christ. Because those are the two most important days. Or three, I want to say. Edwin Twain says two. When you are born and you discover why you were born, I say no. There are three days. When you are born and you discover why you are born. And the day you stand before Jesus Christ to give account of your life. This day and that day. The day that you are born and the day that you will leave this earth. And you will give account to God. Now my brother and my sister. If that doesn't put some fire in your heart, I don't know what's going to put fire in your heart. If you just live every day to get out of life what life offers you, life is going to throw a lot of worldliness your way and life is going to throw you, toss you to and fro and you are never, ever, 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 ever going to climb the ladder or the mountain that God called you to climb. Come on, He called you to greatness, Abraham. Come on, Jacob. He called you to be a blessing. He called you to be Israel. Come on, child of God. You are a chosen generation, a royal priest to the holy people. You are chosen by God to show for these praises. You are alive, appointed by God for this hour to do great things, not just as a generation, but a standout individual, a musician that plays so that the fire of God will fall, a musician that sings so the fire of God will fall, a preacher that preaches and God shows up, a pastor that counsels and the word of knowledge shows up, a doctor that operates and God shows up in that theater room, a student that goes to the class and God shows up because of their relationship with God. Come on! Let's get our eyes on Jesus Christ and press into Him until we find the true and the living Christ and we begin to carry the presence of God in our lives. Um, the, the, the challenge with many people, and I was there as well, and I see it, it's a symptom of religion. And um, you see people are so serious in their prayer and pressing into God and they're missing the mark. It's like they're praying and they're serious, but they're missing the mark. It's a relationship. It's a connection. And Paul on the road to Damascus, who was a blasphemer and a persecutor, when he discovered Jesus, he said, who are you? He said, I'm Jesus. Wow. That changes everything. When the scales fall from your eyes and you see Jesus. And with that, the the second question is intertwined with the first question. What is it? 
that you want me to do. Destiny. 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 It's something that's birthed in you. I was born for this. I was born Forrest Gump, right? I was born to run. Can't do much else, but I was born to run for the glory of God. When you discover who he is, who you are, whatever terminology you want to use, all your slick talk, young people, all this social media jargon, I don't see it changing anything. Because there's no weightiness. There's no substance. When, 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 you, when, you, when you encounter God, you encounter weightiness. You encounter heaviness. Not demonic heaviness. You encounter presence. And that presence never leaves you. Where it finds you and how it finds you. It changes you. And once you find Him... Because you seek Him. Not by the way. So this 1 Corinthians 9, we can apply in two ways. The one is um, running a race in life, which is a double ba- a truth. The other one is actually talking about your relationship with Jesus Christ, is how you are running to know Him. Philippians chapter 3, Paul alludes to that as well. He says, what things were gained to me, I've counted as rubbish that I may gain Christ, that I may know Him. Everything else matters Nothing. What matters is to know Christ. But then people became so heavenly minded, they just want to sit in a corner somewhere. And there's more to that because your destiny is intertwined in your relationship with God. So when you get to know God, it's impossible to stay passive and to stay the same. Isaiah, in the presence of God, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Assignment is birthed in the presence of God. Godfidence, confidence, call it what you like, is birthed in the presence of God. Uh, Gideon, I'm the least of the weakest. An encounter with God, he walks away believing he's a mighty man and he delivers a nation with 300 people. Moses at the burning bush, he stays long enough until he has a change in his mind and he believes this is who I am and because I know who I am, I know what I can do. So what am I saying to you? If, If things are not changing, And the impact is not the way it should be. Harder work is not going to change it. But a discovery, a true discovery, and, and, and the more talented you are, the more difficult this is, what I'm talking about now, because you're reliant on your gifts and your abilities and your talents, like a Samson, like a Saul. You've not learned to be reliant. you confident on your own charisma and your personality and your character and your stature and things have brought you to a certain place which will not take you to the place where God has called you to go. Every Christian, every, 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 every Christian must have an authentic encounter with Jesus Christ, not just once, again and again and again and again. But there has to be a defining moment which then God writes His vision on the tablet of your heart and nothing can take that away from you because you've been impregnated by God. When when you receive Jesus Christ, He comes to live in you. The Holy Spirit overshadows you as He did Mary and He comes to live in you. He lives in you. How can there be a life without vision, without purpose, without fruit, without impact, if we claim we've received the Christ, the Messiah, the Lord, what this world is looking for? Maybe we we discovered a part of Him and we've not pressed in fully to a place of really getting to know God. Because when you get to know God, you get to know yourself.